This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details. Mist is a major bullet point in the history of game design. Since its initial release in 1993, Mist has existed as the gold standard of point-and-click adventure games. Its design has had a major influence on everything from Nintendo's own Metroid Prime to TV shows such as Lost. Mist is to adventure games as Super Mario Bros. is to 2D platformers, and its importance to history cannot be overstated. All that being said, it's also a glorified slideshow. The original Mist used an extensive series of still images to abstractly represent a rich, living 3D world. This was cutting edge, while still being very easy to run on computers of the time. The concept of real Mist, then, is to take the classic game and make it more approachable to modern gamers who may not have grown up with it. It was initially released in 2000, before itself being remastered in 2014 as Real Mist Masterpiece Edition. Finally, in 2020, we can play this remaster of a remake of Mist on the Nintendo Switch. Mystified yet? As there is likely by now an entire generation who would have no idea what Mist is, let's start with the basics. Mist starts you off on the dock of a small island, the titular Mist Island. You're given no immediate explanation of what to do or where to go. Around the island, you'll find a series of toggles, a sunken ship, a rocket ship, an observatory, library, power station, and so much more. Virtually all of these places and things can be interacted with in some way, but figuring out exactly what they do is up to you. You'll also have your first encounter with two brothers, who have been trapped inside red and blue books in the library. Each of these brothers will want you to help them by bringing them pages that match the color of their book. You'll find these pages and more details surrounding the brothers and their families across several different ages. Each age is a unique world and can be entered by finding that age's book on Mist Island. The tone of Mist is difficult to describe. It is otherworldly in its sense of strange mystery. It is ethereal in its feeling of magic and uncertainty. It is haunting in its pervasive loneliness. Even in its original incarnation, I remember finding the ages of mist to be somewhat disturbing. There is a melancholy feeling to exploring worlds that feel so thoroughly abandoned despite seeming recently populated. Adding to this is the incredible sound design, which holds up perhaps better than any other element of mist. Music is by no means constant, but sound always is. The use of soundscapes and music is always intentional and perfectly accentuates the experience. When I first played Mist on my PC as a kid, I kept a notebook beside me at all times to write myself notes and keep track of any codes or hints that I found. I distinctly remember the manual telling me that everything was important and that I should write everything down. Playing on Switch makes this whole experience a bit easier thanks to screen captures. I found myself taking screenshots of anything that looked like it may be important so I could reference them later. While I do wish this was a bit more integrated at a software level, the base level of functionality is extremely helpful. While not quite as pretty as Real Mist Masterpiece Edition on PC, the Switch version does an excellent job of converting the original still images to living 3D environments. That being said, even with a few graphical downgrades, there are still some areas that cause frame rate issues. Fortunately, this isn't a game that demands a high level of performance. There are no enemies or timed events in Mist so a few dropped frames doesn't do too much to damage the overall experience. When playing in handheld mode, you'll also have the option of switching to classic mode. With this mode enabled, the game will mimic the controls of the original release. 
So rather than giving you full first person controls, the touchscreen can be used to navigate just between preset points. Both playstyles work great, but for those looking for something a bit more like the original experience, the classic mode is a wonderful option. It should also be noted that this version also includes the new age that was added for the 2000 release. I won't go too deep to avoid spoilers, but even for those who grew up with Myst, there are fresh experiences to be had here. It's hard to call Myst anything other than a masterpiece, and this modernized version is no exception. The worlds of Myst continued to be developed for years after the original's release, and while sequels and books would develop both the gameplay and the incredibly rich plot and lore, if you ask me, none of them ever quite recaptured the feeling of the original. While the Switch version has some minor performance issues, they're more than made up for by portability and the option to play with touch controls in classic mode. If you've never played Myst, or if you grew up with the original, take this excuse to journey back to the ages of Myst and get lost all over again. This video is made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.